oscillators. And you may also have heard that this is one of the platforms where you can develop a uh, quantum computer. Thank you. Thank you, Göran. Uh, do we have Professor Clark with us on the phone? Yes, you do. Good morning, Professor Clark, and, and congratulations to the Nobel Prize in Physics. Thank you so much. Was this a surprise to you? So, to, to, to put it mildly, it was a surprise of my life. <laughs> okay. And I'm very sorry my two colleagues are not with us. But. Ah. Uh, I'm sitting here in this beautiful session hall of the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences at the press conference with the many interested journalists here, both from the national and the international press. Are you ready to take some questions from them? Yes. Uh, SVT? Um, I have to congratulate you on, uh, on the award, of course. Uh, my, my first thought was um, um, that it's quite mind-boggling, your discoveries. I was wondering, did it occur to you at the time um, that this, uh, um, that you managed to prove there is microscopic quantum tunneling, that it might be grounds, uh, the grounds for a Nobel Prize in physics? I think that that had not occurred to us in any way. Uh, p pardon, I didn't get that. Uh, I, I think that it had not, um, we, ha we had not realized in any way that this might be the basis of a Nobel Prize. Do you remember the specific breakthrough and, and uh, how, how it, at, what happened at the time? Well, um, Michel Devere and uh, John Martinez are brilliant people. Um, I, I worked very closely with them for uh, at, at least a year on this and other topics. And I, I, the first thing I would like to say is that this discovery would never have happened without, without the two of them. I, mean, I was in principle the leader of the group, of course, but uh, their contributions are just overwhelming. Okay, uh, one question there, please. Uh, hi, Professor Clark. Uh, this is Yi Wei from the Chinese Media Intellectual. Uh, first, congratulations, and I would like to know your feelings now and where you are now. And the second question is, uh, what do you think your research uh, has left the open questions for the next generation of physicists? Thank you. Well, first of all, my feelings are that I'm completely stunned, of course. Uh, this had, it had never occurred to me in any way that this might be the basis of a Nobel Prize. Um, and I'm sorry, what was your second question? Uh, my second question is, what open questions does your discovery leave for the next generation of physicists? Well, I think that um, it's already been uh, suggested that this is something that does key to the further development of, or the development of, um, sorry, I'm losing my words, um, of, of, the, of the quantum computer. I mean, many people are working on quantum computing, and I think that I mean, I, I think that it is recognized that our discovery is, is in many ways uh, the basis of this. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Bogun Radrewski from the Polish Television. Uh, congratulations, Professor. I wanted to ask you because, uh, well, everyone in this room has a, a smartphone and we have cameras that use memory chips uh, that, act, that are actually based on uh, the effects that uh, you were studying. Uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, did you 
predict when you made your discoveries that they are going to have uh, such a widespread practical applications? And what do you think is going to be the next step in that regard? I, it certainly had not occurred to us in any way that this discovery would have such a significant impact. And um, we were buried in understanding the, uh, the physics and the, and the calculations that went into this. And it was very much following up on this brilliant work by Tony Leggett, who of course also subsequently won the Nobel Prize. Um, also, I, I would like to say that I, you, I knew and still do know Brian Josephson very well. Um, he and I were colleagues as uh, graduate students together in Cambridge all those years ago. And uh, I recognized that he was much more brilliant than I was. And uh, I think that I think that he and, and, and Tony will also be very thrilled that, uh, um, along with Michelle Deveray and John Martinez, we won the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that I answered your question, but... Uh, <laughs> More questions? Yes, please. Thank you. Congratulations, Professor Clark. Um, my name is Yan Nanju from Mr. Salon in China. And my question is, uh, quantum phenomena are universal. So where exactly is the boundary between the uh, classical and quantum worlds? Thank you. Well, um, I, think, I think that the, the, the real difference is that the, the quantum world depends on quantum mechanics, which as someone uh, commented uh, earlier in, in this discussion, quantum mechanics was discovered many years ago now from, uh, by uh, Schrodinger almost 100 years ago. And that's the underlying basis. The thing is that classical physics doesn't depend on quantum mechanics. But it's really this discovery by, by Schrodinger almost a century ago that is the sort of underlying basis of um, all of this work and of quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Anneli Megner Arn from uh, Swedish TV4. Congratulations. Uh, I wonder what Thank you. connections you see between. Um, between the quantum computers and your discovery? Well, I think that our discovery in, 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 in some ways is, is the, 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 the basis of quantum computing. Um, exactly where all this fits in is not at this moment entirely clear to me, but um, I, think, I think that this is well, the, <coughs> excuse me a second. I, I think that, um, I, 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 I think that the, the basis of quantum computing relies to quite an extent on our discovery. But our discovery, as I said, also depends on many other people like uh, Brian Josephson and uh, Tony Leggett. Yes, please, there, in the back. Congratulations, Mr. Clark, consulting from AP. Could you tell us how your discovery is used by average consumer today? Thank you. Well, um, it, it's, it's, as people have pointed out, I mean, the um, many straightforward uh, applications are things like uh, the, the, the cell phone. And uh, I'm speaking on my cell phone and I suspect that you are too. And uh, that one of the underlying reasons that the cell phone works is because of, uh, of all this work.
And of course, other applications too. But I think that the most common one, I mean, almost everyone has a cell phone in the, in the modern world. Uh, one last question. Uh, congratulations, Professor Claude. I have one question. Is Thank that uh, I'm also an experimentalist, and now we say this uh, superconducting qubits and the neutral atoms and trapped ions are both good candidates for supercomputing in the future. Which one do you think is most strength in the future? Sorry, could you repeat those again, please? Uh, so my question is that uh, for the moment we know that for uh, superconducting qubits and uh, uh, neutral atoms, uh, like cold atoms and also ion trap, so they also show a very good uh, candidate for the future superconduct superconductor. So which one do you think that is most uh, probably for the future that we will use? I'm sorry, I don't quite understand that uh, I, I mean you talked about qubits and, and neutral atoms and, and what exactly are you asking? Maybe we need to take that question afterwards. Um, okay. okay, yes. I think this was the last question for you, Professor Clark. Uh, thank you, and once again, our warmest congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. We, we look forward to meeting you in 